Today is Trinity Sunday, the Holy Undivided Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And I thought our first focus might be on this. See it there? Rublev's a very famous icon of the Holy Trinity. Most uh, famous people in the world, certainly of Russian iconographers in the medieval times, who painted uh, this extremely uh, famous icon and has been copied many, many times. I was slightly surprised at one of our Zoom Easter groups uh, that one person mentioned they weren't uh, familiar with this icon. Um, when in fact in our very own Trinity Chapel in St Michael's we have two of Rublev's trinities, very small admittedly, one slightly larger than the other and it hangs above the altar on the wall there um, just above uh, the cross. Um, so that's one trinity and then the other one which is smaller which is on the ledge there on the shelf next to the sacristy door. Um, and so we have two of Rublev's trinities. Very apt, because of course our chapel is dedicated to the Holy Trinity. We were once Holy Trinity Church. The side chapel is now the Trinity Chapel. With this icon, I've actually lived with it just about, well, just about all my life, really. For the first 26 years, when I entered my mother's study, there I would see Rublev's Trinity. It was my mother's favourite. And she had it above her desk, hanging there on the wall. And her doctoral thesis was actually on the Trinity, and she would sit there at her desk, writing her theology, with a Parker fountain pen, black ink. I remember it very, very well. Black pen, gold top, and she'd sit there writing madly, being inspired by uh, the Trinity, Rublev's icon specifically. Mum died when I was 26, and about five years or so after that, I was a novice in the Society of St Francis, they're the Anglican Franciscans, and a fellow novice called Philip painted me this, and he gave it to me as a gift, and a remarkably fine gift it is, and it's been in my prayer room ever since, whatever rectory I've been in. And I left the community and I left the Franciscans, went back to being a parish priest. Um, and this icon went with me, uh, as I say, in the prayer room. It's a sort of central position for me as I do a bit of yoga, as I meditate, as I say the morning office. I'm looking at this icon. So Rublev's Trinity is very familiar to me. And I thought I might say something about that, um, which is obviously um, highly appropriate for the theme of this day. This icon then. Well, why, why does the Trinity matter? That's probably a pretty good starting point before we actually launch into this icon. My mother would claim that you should preach the Trinity every Sunday. And I know it's a bit of a joke among clergy when we come to Trinity Sunday. Um, some rectors may try and palm it off to somebody else to preach on this theme, which on one level is a little sad because it's utterly central to the Christian faith. Hence my mother's line, the Trinity should be proclaimed every Sunday. It is the heart of Christianity. And Trinity Sunday is a very obvious opportunity to really flag that up, which is what I'm doing now. So this icon depicting the Trinity. Now, if you really want to know about it, 
Google Rublev, Holy Trinity, and you can spend all afternoon reading all about this icon. You could certainly say, go on retreat and for a week reflect on what this icon is about. I've got about 12 minutes or so, probably go a little bit more than that quite often with these recordings. Um, but very little time, but briefly to mention, here we have three angels. You'll notice that they're all actually exactly the same in shape and size. You may not be able to see this, but they're holding the spears, the three spears, exactly the same. What you will be able to see is a common colour, different colours, but the dominant colour, which all three are wearing, is blue, an intense blue. And as you'll probably know, that's the colour for divinity. So three distinct angels, but the same, depicting the Holy Trinity, one in three and three in one. But they're not exactly the same, are they? Which one is which is invariably a good question. Most of us, sometimes when I forget, I do this. You zone in on the central figure and saying that's God the Father. Well, it isn't. A very common mistake. If you read icons, you go from left to right, and so you start with God the Father, this figure here, and then you go to God the Son, who is the central figure, and then you go to God the Holy Spirit on the right of the icon. Left to right, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Again, you won't really be able to see this, but if you look at their eyes, the Son and the Holy Spirit look towards the Father, and the Father looks to the Son. It's a wonderful icon in all sorts of ways, but supremely it highlights relationships. They are all connected, forming, if you like, something of a circle. And if you want to understand something of the sort of basics of Christianity, a very common question is, well, how does it work? What do you do? What are the rules and regulations? Asking that question, you're missing the point. Because as those of us who practice the Christian faith, we know that it's not actually about that. It's at its root, it's about worshipping a God of love, of unconditional love. 1 John 4 says that very clearly, those classic verses, 4, 7 to 12, first letter of John. It says God is love. And that's so much of what we're about. And if God is love, an extension of that is God is about relationship. Loving God, loving fellow human beings, first two commandments, that's about relationship. Our relationship with God, our relationship with each other. So the Trinity gets all of that in this outstanding icon about relationship. Briefly, I'd like to comment on the lectionary, specifically Mark's Gospel, because it is the Mathean Commission, and you can't just let that one go. Matthew 28, 16 to 20, and you'll be very familiar with it. It's the sending out of the 11 disciples Jesus directs them to go out and as it says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me go there for make disciples of all nations baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and we've been doing that for 2,000 years ever since that 
apostolic commission, we sometimes call it, the Matthean commission, the, the sending out of the apostles, the 11 disciples. We've been doing that ever since, baptizing people with that threefold formula of the Trinity. But when we're being sent out, what are we actually telling people? Obviously about Jesus of Nazareth. But supremely, it's about the triune God. Of course, Jesus, uh, the Christ, is one part of that, the second part of the Trinity. And it is about Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And it is about their unique relationship and how that, if you like, impacts us in our Christian lives. The message, the message of Trinity Sunday, is about the supreme importance of our relation with God, the triune God, and with our fellow human beings. And that's what we've been sent out to proclaim. Preach it, um, hopefully we live it, we live it by service, but that's, that's what we say which makes us distinct from all the other great world religions. Some people maybe particularly say from the Islamic faith uh, will say Christians worship three gods. We emphatically don't. Because, of course, Islam has a very radical monotheism, one God. Uh, well, so do we. But we say one in three and three in one. So on this Trinity Sunday, maybe with your computers, iPads, whatever, uh, go and Google this, um, have a look at it, uh, read about it. There's a huge amount of material there on the Internet. Come to a greater appreciation of what the Trinity is about. Enter into this icon, because I don't know about you and I reflect on it. There's almost this invitation as the person outside to go into the icon and form, if you like, a square. Yourself between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And maybe have, have a dialogue between the three um, and yourself entering into that triune relationship. We give thanks for the Trinity, the holy and undivided Trinity, unique to our Christian faith. In the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.